Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 112 of the All Dolphins podcast on this wonderful Monday, October 30th. And Omar, this one's going to be really, really, really easy as we recognize the player with the corresponding jersey number of the episode number because the Dolphins have only had one player wear number 12. That would be Hall of Famer Bob Greasy. Oh, bro. Did you know I didn't know who wore number 12? Like, I. It's okay. Hey. Uh Announcer, I know him as announcer Bob Greasy. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Uh, fourth overall pick in the 1967 draft out of Purdue, which actually was the first combined draft with the AFL and NFL picking from the same pool of players. Mm-hmm. And then in 1970, the leagues merged. Okay. Uh, became the AFC and the NFC to create the overall NFL. Anyway, Bob Greasy played for the Dolphins from 1967 through 1980. Of course, he was a starting quarterback when the Dolphins won Super Bowl seven to cap the perfect season of 1972 and won Super Bowl eight to uh, while defeating the Minnesota Vikings 24 seven. And he threw, if I'm not mistaken, a grand total of I think it was like 19 passes in those two games combined because all the Dolphins did was run and play defense and shut down the Redskins and the Vikings. Let me ask you this question. Ask me for comparative sake. Because I've never seen Bob Greasy play. Who would you compare him to in this era or yesterday's era of quarterbacks? Wow, that's a tough one because, again, the game was so different. The one thing is the quarterbacks called their own plays back then. And, again, the Dolphins were a run-heavy team, very, very good defensively, extraordinarily sound, didn't beat themselves and then he threw the occasional deep ball to Paul Warfield. So as far as a comp, yeah, not that much. Chad Pennington, maybe? Oh, okay. That's respectable. More than Chad Pennington, so Chad Pennington was pretty tall, if I recall. Um, so he made it to the Hall of Fame because he had a, he was a quarterback behind an elite team, not necessarily that he was an elite player. Um, he did win an NFL MVP one year in 1977. Oh, that's big time. Yeah, he had a a really good year. In fact, he was a quarterback when the Dolphins had set their scoring record in a 55-14 to win against the Cardinals on Thanksgiving Day. Record, which obviously was broken this year in that insane 70-20 to game against the Denver Broncos in Week 3. So, um, but I think more so than the passing numbers, Bob Greasy – made it to the Hall of Fame as as the leader of that offense of the 1970s and the Super Bowl Dolphins. So anyway, only player to wear number 12, one of only three players to have his jersey number retired by the Dolphins. You should know who the other two are. 13. And uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Larry Little? No. No. For, right, right for his Zonka. name. Zonka. Number 39. Zonka, yes. Nice. Who tweeted out a picture of a guy wearing his throwback jersey? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, that if you do not know Larry Zonka tweets, you you need to get to know it. I mm-hmm. sincerely hope he's actually the person tweeting it because it just shows his personality. I I, I love I love Larry Zonka tweets. I, I believe he is. I think you know he is act fairly active on social media, and yeah, no, he's he's like he's a, he's quite the character from that. 1970s. We, we have a goal. We need to get Larry Zonka on the All Dolphins podcast. That's that's my new goal because he's no. so entertaining. He is. No, I don't know him. I don't know him much because you know I don't pay attention to those old dudes. That's all. That's all you. Um, I will see what I can do. I actually interviewed him a while back. Uh, I'm trying to remember the occasion. I don't remember the occasion. Maybe it was like three or four years ago. Uh, Man, those old dudes got to love this team. They they truly do got to love this team. They do, except the 72 team would look at them and go, what is it they're doing on offense? That doesn't look like what we did. I mean, because you want to talk about two completely different styles of offense. If if they watch football for the last 20 years, they'll realize that their brand of football does not exist anymore. Correct, except maybe they might point to the Tennessee Titans when they were winning the AFC South or okay. the Eagles last year uh, or maybe the 49ers to a certain degree. There was some resemblance. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but the Dolphins are one of those running teams. I think Dolphins are still number one uh, in the uh, – Respect on their name. 
They've, they've, they've just they're barely holding on to it still. But when Devon Achan comes back, off to the races. In what universal would we call the Dolphins a running team? I still call them a running team. They average 151 rushing yards per game, sir. That's not what I asked, sir. I Did still you- call them a running. They are a balanced team, and that balance is part of the reason why they are still so good and still the number one ranked offense in the NFL. And I've always said from the very beginning, if you want to see Tua be elite and be at his best, get him a rushing attack. Now balance. And, um, and it's not hard. always chutzy. They finished the game. On Sunday against the Patriots, powering, four-minute offense. It was majestic. It was beautiful. We're running it. You can't stop us. We need to throw the ball on third down. You can't stop our quarterback. Let's drive all the way down the field. Oh, we we got a cheap motion out with Tyreek. Oh, you're going to double cover Tyreek? Jalen Waddle was wide open in the middle of the field. Okay. That is a kill. That's a beautiful finish. Oh, it's a great drive. No, no, no question about that. The, only, the only problem, Omar, the only problem with your premise there is the Dolphins rushed for 78 yards yesterday. Uh, and oh, I it, know. But, but on that I, drive, I'm curious how much, how many of those yards were on that drive. Let like me. 21. It was like 21. I already d- did the math. So. Of course you did. Yes, I did because this is where if I if I'm going to make a point, I tr- usually try to come prepared and. I'm going to maintain that while the running game has had some success this season, without question, this is a passing team. I mean, come on. Um, the Where's running the game. Season? Say what? I'm saying, oh, 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 I got you. I got you. Go ahead. You got me. Wait, 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 wait. I got you. I Don't got worry. You we're, going get, we're going to get to the news of the day in a second. I, I got you. Backed into a corner. Are you ready for this? Go for it. Dolphins this season through six games. 206 rushing attempts, 195 completions. What happened in the last two games? They played They played eight games. New England. It, uh, I said through the last eight games. Except said, through six games. I apologize. Look at you. Okay. You're trying to get me on semantics. Six <laughs> games. <laughs> I'm going to try to get to again. They, okay. They got, now, let's do, let, now let's do yard, yardage gain. Don't do me like that. Hold hey, on, wait a minute. I mean, come on. It's, it's just not, okay. don't, don't do me like that. They're averaging 100. They're averaging, okay, 453 yards of offense. And, yes, 151 of them are, are through the ground. But, bro, 150. Okay. You, you're telling me that the team that has the most rushing yards in the NFL isn't a rushing team. Is that what you're really saying? That's exactly what I'm telling you, and and, uh, and I'm telling you that the running game is an offshoot of the passing game, and again, the passing game and the threat of the passing. It's exactly what I'm going to tell you. And the passing yeah. game is a pro- byproduct of the rushing attack as well. It is like Mac McDaniel says. It is everybody is feeding off everything. Sure. Everything. It, except they had 60 yards of I hate 60 when you say yards. Sure. I hate you. your shoes are, are extremely dismissive. I bet you your sure. wife means about your shirts too. She's like, whenever you say sure, it's just like, eh, dismiss it. Sure, 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 sure. My wife has many reasons to complain about me, but um, anyway. And I'm sure sure is high on the list. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. There are a lot of things to pile up at the list. I'm playing. You, you want meatloaf for dinner? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um. See, now I lost my train of thought. No. Uh, yeah, but y- yesterday they were at about 60 yards, leading, le- still winning the game 24-17. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, hold on, wait, wait, wait. You holding that against them? They're on their ninth offensive lineman in that game. Like, what do you want that's them to do? That's fine, but it's like my thing is game in, game out, they do they do a lot of damage with a passing game, and they've that's- had a, chunk, a couple of games that they've been crazy good with the running game, it's not there every game the way the 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 passing game is. It wasn't there against Eagles, and yes, I know Connor Williams in play, but to me again, it's a passing it's a passing team. I, I don't look. It's, just, it's a well balanced team. Can we say that? Can we agree on that? It's a very well sure, balanced. Sure, team. absolutely. Because you're you're sitting here saying that the the best rushing team in the NFL is not a rushing team, and. Are they're they just, the best rushing team in the NFL, or, or are they, they number are, one purely by stats? Heavily, oh wow! Heavily skewed by this like crazy game too. against Denver. No, I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm le- legitimately asking you your opinion. Who's the better running team, the Eagles or the Dolphins? 
Oh, wow. Okay. The Eagles aren't even in the top 10 of rushing when it comes to yards per attempt. They're 4.12. So let's put some respect. Well, yeah, exactly how many how many tush pushes are involved in that. Oh, wow. Okay. Fair. Touche. Touche. Well played. Well played, sir. But I'm sorry. But if I'm averaging 5.8, 5.9, it's really 5.89 Denver yards game. per attempt and 151 rushing yards per game, I would like to consider myself a rushing team. I'm sorry. I would. Yes, well, when they're averaging average, 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 yards passing. One passing yards per game as well. Okay. And 8.71 so yeah. yards per attempt, which is highest in the league. San Fran's coming for you second in 8.64. But, man, oh, the disrespect, man. They're, they're a rushing team. How, rushing. Is, how is that? They're not okay. Okay, let's see. Let's see attempts. Let's see attempts. Since you 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 want to play the semantics game, no, but, I'm asking you a question, to, and and for you not to completely always fall back on stats, which again we can make the stats say whatever you want the stats to say. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. That's true. And that's okay. Yeah. Uh, yards per attempt. They're ninth in the NFL. Twenty-five point eight yards per attempt. Okay. And no, no, no. Whoa, whoa, you said 25 point yards per attempt. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 25.8 attempts per game. Exactly. And let's see how many teams have run the ball more than them. Five teams have run the ball more than them Baltimore Ravens, Cleveland Browns, Jacksonville Jaguars, Indianapolis Colts, and the Buffalo Bills, who I, you would argue are all rushing teams, correct? Baltimore is a running team. Um, although Cleveland. maybe, maybe a little bit less this year. What? I said Cleveland was a rushing. They're still a rushing team. Cleveland, first, Cleveland's a defensive team. They don't have – right now their offense is kind of struggling because their quarterback can't get on the field. Um, so I, I don't know. It does – okay, we're getting into semantics, and I got, I'm going to get the feeling we're going to turn, turn off a lot of viewers. The Dolphins are a very well-balanced offense. How about that? Uh, I refuse to categorize them as a running team. Omar can do that if he wants. To me, they're a very balanced offense. And what stands out to me is – the quick play, the quick strike ability more so than anything else. Um, the Dolphins will be, as we're taping this, they have not yet left for Germany. They are leaving Monday early, Monday evening. And uh, we have come to find out that the Chiefs are taking a different approach and leaving Thursday. If you believe in those things, I, I like the Dolphins approach a lot better. Get yourself acclimated to the time change. Uh, the, the team bonding – aspect of it is all great to me i think it's more than an issue of get yourself acclimated we, and we can go back to the buffalo jacksonville game in london where the jaguars this was their second consecutive game in london they stayed there after their first one buffalo flew in i believe late in the week and the jaguars won and buffalo looked all types of out of sorts that entire game i i think that this should be an approach that teams if you're going to make players go play in european countries uh, you should be required to be there by Wednesday. Um, and I know two players get Tuesday day off. At, at, it, it may, I, having done that trip twice, it's tremendously difficult on the body, extremely difficult beyond the point of like reasonable, takes you 48 hours just to get your body adjusted. So, and in fairness to the players, you can't take me to a foreign country. A lot of times that's the first time, a lot of these players have ever gone to a foreign country and then they can't leave their hotel. That's just not right. Especially if you're going to be expanding your brand to these international teams. And, and I do support that. Let's play in Mexico. Let's play in Canada. Let's play in, in Central America, Central America. I mean, South America. Let's play in Europe. Hell, let's play in Africa. If we can find a stadium that, that, that suits NFL. It can and, but have it so that the players can have that experience as opposed to just, Oh, we fly in there. Next day we're playing a game. Next, and then we fly out right after the game. That's horrible. At least let their families and and the players enjoy it. No, I, I don't disagree with you. And actually, but I, I can playing devil's advocate. The other side of it would be, and that's not, and again, I want to be clear. That's not necessarily my position. I haven't really given a whole lot of thought. But the other side of it would be, well, you're there to win a football game, not to go sightseeing. And I, I guess to a certain degree, that's fair, especially in a game like this where this game could have massive ramifications down the line. 
because you're looking at two of the four teams currently tied atop the AFC standings, and whoever mm-hmm. wins gets a big leg up. And then KCO has already defeated Jacksonville, one of the, the six and two teams. So if they get that one too, then um, – but I, I, I can see your argument as well. Massive leg up. Is it insurmountable? No, it's yeah. not. But I, 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 I think – I'm not worried about, I don't even know what the line is. I think the line is Kansas City by two. I've heard it, but I haven't double checked it. Um, It's a neutral feel. I like that from the standpoint, it's going to help the Dolphins, especially with their jet motions or cheat motions or whatever you want to call it, which I would argue and can still argue until you prove me otherwise, it does not work the same on the road as it does at home where you can have a full-fledged communication. I know you're not arguing. People no, 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 I'm not arguing. I, I, and I know this may shock some people. No, I'm not arguing. I completely agree with you. People people don't see it, but when you watch the road games, you don't see it as much. And and Tyreek in full motion is a, is a cheat code, which is why it's called by Kyle Shanahan uh, a cheat motion. Now, do you absolutely need to win this game? No. Because I think if you continue your schedule, continue to peak the right time, get guys healthy back, don't rush guys, you will be putting yourself in position to win 12 games, which should give you home field advantage for everything. And probably not a first round bye, but as long as you play your games at home and don't have to travel to Cincinnati or Baltimore or Buffalo, you got a real good shot of of coming out and, and playing in the AFC championship game. And then ultimately you're going to have to take care of business with whoever makes it to the AFC championship game. And maybe it's the charger. Maybe it's the, maybe not the chargers. It won't be the chargers. Maybe, maybe it's the chiefs. Maybe it's not the chiefs, but if the chiefs have home field advantage and first round by the number, the AFC champions, then, you know, they got to make it through the rounds too. And then you, you see them in that final round before the super bowl. I think the dolphins have a great plan, great strategy, take care of business, when you're in position to take care of business and they know that this is a big matchup. They know that this is a big game. Um, I don't think the matchups are as bad as the bills matchup and as the Eagles matchup. So I, I definitely do like their chances. No, but I, I don't disagree with anything you said, except I'm, I'm more greedy than you are. Why, <laughs> why, why, why would you want the number one seed? I, I, yeah, that, no, I do want. I didn't say I don't right? want the number but one. You're, seed. you're like, well, they can lose because they'll have a good season. Sure. Without question. How, how about you win the game and now you're the one with the advantage, you know, as far as getting the number one seed and you, the, the Dolphins are going to play at Baltimore later in the year. That's another head to head game that could very well play a large role in determining the, the, the top of the seeding in the AFC. So, and I, I'm with you. And, and this may be crazy to say. I'm not so sure. I don't prefer the matchup of the Dolphin defense against the KC offense as opposed to the other way around. Because right now, KC to me is a lot better team on defense than they are on offense. Um, okay. And I'm not just and, saying that because of what happened against Denver. Go ahead. And you're, you're, they have to keep pace with Kansas City offense. Um, if Connor Williams plays and Teron Armstead plays, which is – Wishful thinking, putting it up there to the prayer gods. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm I'm really optimistic and think it is going to happen, but I I don't know. But if they play, I think they have a good chance of containing that defensive front. I'm not scared of anybody on that on that team except for one player. And if I have somebody to contain him, even though he moves around, I don't worry about him moving to right tackle because I think Austin Jackson is having a Pro Bowl caliber season. Um, I don't have a- any concerns about him if Teron Armstead plays, and even Kendall Lamb. I think Kendall Lamb has done an admirable job, but give me Connor Williams. Okay, which by the way, we're talking about Chris Jones, and yeah. if you're not worried about Chris Jones because you have a lot of faith in Austin Jackson, Teron Armstead, and Connor Williams, I'd be like, the dude is a game wrecker, and that's not. Yeah. It's not just as if the defense is not just Chris Jones. They also have a really, really good secondary. Uh, with some good cornerbacks with Legarius Sneed, um, Murphy, Reed, uh, Trent McDuffie. Yeah, don't oh, believe, yeah. don't yes. believe he's related to OJ McDuffie, former Dolphin, great wide receiver. I don't believe they're related. Um, and then they have a couple of good safety, Justin Reed. It's Sneed, Legarius Sneed. Uh, Justin Reed and the other gentleman's name escapes Brian. me. Brian Cook. Brian Cook, correct. Um, 
So I, I they're very solid on defense. And I think they were last I checked last week, they might have been number five in total defense. And the game against Denver, it was I mean, it was a complete crap show by their offense. They turned the ball over four times, uh, dropped passes all over the place, including a fourth down pass in the end zone on a perfect throw by Mahomes. I think it was uh, Sky Moore who dropped the ball. So I think right now their offense is a hell of a whole lot of Mahomes doing stuff on the fly and Travis Kelsey, whereas their defense is really good. Uh, and this is one of those where immediately you think, you know, I think Dolphins Chiefs are at 38-35. I, I could be I could be seeing a game that's a lot lower scoring than that, particularly if you look at the weather forecast in Frankfurt, it's call, it calls for rain the entire week. It, they are fourth in defense, allowing 287 yards per game, which is ridiculous. Dolphins, by the way, are 16th at 329, and that's props to them. Let's clap it up for them. Because and they're moving up. They're moving up they, the ranks. They, they, they started at the bottom, now they're here. Let, 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 I think the expectation for Vic Fangio was for him to have a top 10 defense and we're, 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 we're on our way. Let's, let's get it moving. No, I, I agree. I, th- I think this defense is on the move and on the way to really, really interesting things. Um, which is why that gives me a hell of a lot of optimism about this team down the stretch. Cause I think the defense is coming. Uh, and you saw, um, by the way, you saw the elevator. The Dolphins do this thing when, when they celebrate a victory Monday with elevator in the big picture, and it was Jalen Ram- Ramsey, very appropriate with his. Why are you shaking your head? Who else was it going to be? Like could they been, was like, I don't want Tyree Kill. Could have been Jalen Waddle with scored touchdowns. Could have been Cedric Wilson's touchdown. It could have been Tua. It could have been one of the Did three. Any side. other pro bowlers back yesterday? That's fine. Yeah, well, he didn't get a pick. Back he didn't pick. It wouldn't have been his. Guys coming back three months from meniscus injury? Come on. Tom Garfield was better than that, sir. By like, the way, we never ad- did address this, but it was interesting in this press conference. Uh, the nature of the knee surgery was discussed. And you don't want to you don't want to go right, there. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's discuss it. Let's discuss it. Well, because and, and by the way, we, we haven't also we need to discuss what Mike McDaniel had to say about the injuries on Monday. Um, no, that there was a it report, it was full repair. Cur- well, correct. There was a, there was a report suggesting it was only a trim, which is obviously a lot less serious. And Jalen Jalen was saying, mm, no, it was a full repair, we- and which makes the recovery at three months completely crazy, or two months. Has it been three? It's two months. I, no, late July, late July, late October. Three months. Sorry. Let Let me say this. I'm not calling anybody a liar. I'm not doing that. I don't know anybody's journey. I don't know anybody's story and anybody's struggle. But I certainly want the best story possible. And <laughs> what does that mean? By default, you're believing Jalen because it's a better story? No, 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 no. I'm just saying, if I'm Jalen, I want you to think I'm a mir- miraculous healer. And yeah, that was a full minute. No, nobody knows. I've had, I forget, I've had an MCL repair. It wasn't meant to be a repair. It was meant to be a scope. Then they got in there and they looked at it and said, oh, it's torn. We got to repair it. Now, mind you, I tell the story all the time. Mind you, I talked to my doctor and was like, hey, am I going to be able to go? I had a trip planned to Mexico, to Cancun at like the the weekend. He was like, oh, no problem. No worries. No surgery. No worries about it. It's just a scope. You'll be fine. Literally, I come out of surgery. I'm struggling with my knee. I got to wear a brace. I'm on crutches. And I'm like, hey, this guy told me I'd be walking. I finally get back in Miami after my vacation, after limping around an entire trip, pain, swelling, sitting in an ice tub, whatever. And then I said, hey, you told me that this is going to be fine and I was going to be okay and it was just going to be a scope. And he's like, oh, yeah, when we, we got in there, we saw that the MCL was torn and we just we just decided to repair it. We were, and And – I'm like, you guys didn't think to tell me about this um, before the, you know, the second, the, the the reassessment of it. And, you know, it's just an oversight. But my point is, a lot of times they don't get in there and they don't know the extent of the damage until they actually oh, get in correct. there. And see. So, and the only person who would really know, who would really, really, really know what was happening and what was done and how it was repaired and the extent of it was the doctors who performed it. And Jalen Ramsey, 
and what people and what Jalen Ramsey and the doctor tell people. Correct. So the question then becomes, well, who, who was the source of the information uh, hey. divulged in that report? If Jalen says it was a full meniscus, it was a full meniscus. Yeah. Sure. Truth is, truth is, it doesn't matter anyway because he's back and he showed you. By the way, the the one thing that struck out to me that not right that stood out to me about his play is, that, and it's interesting too. It's with such a contrast where we we talk so often about Noah Benagini having good physical traits but no instincts. Well, what you saw in that play by Jalen Ramsey, that's that's a guy with massive instincts, you know. And what, that's, what I, go, go ahead, finish what you. No, I was gonna say and. That's what it's not just the fact that Jalen Ramsey's really fast and he's very fluid and he's got good hips, um, mm-hmm. and we, and all and all that scout scouties language that you hear. Sometimes it's just like the guy just, you know, has it and it comes he, easily. He sees it. He's seen a ton of ball. Eight year veteran, played at an elite level, shadowed guys. I, I I found a couple of things that Mike McDaniel said last week. He said it on a Wednesday, and I was like, hmm, this is interesting that you said that. He was like. His mastery and understanding of the scheme, because he's played in it in so many of his places, of his stops, gives him the upper hand on everybody else where he and and he kind of knows it better than all the other guys. And I didn't know what he really meant until I started seeing Jalen practice the work in it. Now, when I watched him practice, Jalen has this like sidestep. He doesn't backpedal. He no, sidesteps. And I was like. That looks odd. That looks weird. Why is he doing that? And I thought it was something that was like a precautionary thing for the knee. And I saw him do this for like two weeks. And I thought it was something that was a precautionary thing because he didn't feel he didn't feel comfortable backpedaling. No, that's how he plays the scheme. He plays the scheme in zone coverage, sidestepping. And I'm like, oh, OK, that's interesting. Well, now I see why he does when he broke on that ball like he did and 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 took off. Like, you can't break on that ball as fast as he does if you're in a backpedal motion. And he, really, he really got after it. And so now I'm saying, okay, now I see how they want these cornerbacks to play. Maybe it's just him that can do that. But now I understand why this Xavier's transition – is, doesn't look as smooth as it does in this zone scheme. Xavier's way more comfortable in man. Mm-hmm. You you could see he continues to struggle with man versus zone. Um, but this is a zone scheme. You you have to be comfortable in it in order to play at the level. And I think Xavier has phenomenal ball skills and phenomenal awareness. But problem is he's so used to backpedaling. I don't know. I don't see him like just molding fitting merging into this scheme as as you would have liked or have have hoped now obviously he's coming back from the groin injury hopefully he plays this week if he doesn't then he gets the bye week to rest and probably by the time we come back from the bye against Devontae Adams he should be fine I mean he'd he'd have rested a full month which which might be the right strategy and it's not like KC really scares you with any of the wide receivers they have, as as we already discussed. So let let's attack the uh, the injuries, uh, as per Mike McDaniel in his media session on Monday. He was asked about Teron Armstead and whether this is the week where his window opens, a window meaning designated to return and starts to practice. And McDaniel made all sorts of jokes about, well, I don't know about the windows, how easily they open and in Europe and all that, because I've never been to Europe. And basically the bottom line there, he's kind of hinted, suggested that it was looking promising that Armstead would start practicing. Durham Smythe, who we saw in a walking boot on Monday, calls him a really tough guy. One of those guys where he didn't really tell the the trainers how bad it was during the game. Uh, And then basically said something, I don't want to say it was ominous, but said I would never put it past Durham Smythe to play in any game which is not quite the same as saying day-to-day or is definitely playing. Um, I think he might be put on that Alec Engel plan where he walks in a boot till the whatever injury, whether it's a foot, an ankle, a toe. We don't really know what it is until the injury report comes out on Wednesday, but I think he could potentially be wearing that boot, not practice on Wednesday, practice Thursday, Friday, walk through Saturday and make it to the game day. Alec Ingle has done that for the last two weeks. I'm pretty sure it's going to be three this week. 
Except the only the only difference there is Durham Smythe plays a hell of a lot more snaps than Alec Ingle on a weekly basis. And sure, Julian Hill has looked good, uh, the rookie free agent. He's been solid. Let's not say he looked good. Okay, he's been solid. You're so you're so hard on everybody, Omar. Just you're just a hater. As long good. as it's not two, we're all good. <laughs> um, well, two look great. Um, Julian Hill has looked. Alec has looked. What was the word you used? Solid. Okay. Solid. He's been solid. solid. But, but been there's a drop off because Term Dermis might a better player. Uh, Ken Lamb, uh, David Long Jr., and Zach Sealer, all of whom went into the medical tent at one point during the game, uh, basically suggested that they'll all make an effort. We'll see on Wednesday. Ken Lamb came back into the game, so I don't think it's a major issue. Zach Sealer, as I mentioned yesterday, was one point was shaking his hand following a play. Near the goal line, I want to say it was before New England scored their fourth quarter touchdown. Stayed in the game, finished the drive. So I don't know if the pain got worse as he got to the sideline. I don't know. David Long, I never saw what happened to him. Okay. Uh, Robert Nance. Robert Hunt, what did he say? Sorry? I heard he got kicked in the nads. Oh, that one. That was the one. Yeah, yeah, that was the one over the, over the middle. That's right. I put on Twitter. Reminded me of the great coach from the Florida Panthers hockey coach where he talked about a player – having a testicular contusion, which to me is an absolute all-timer. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Robert Hunt, uh, Javon Holland is also in the concussion protocol. More than likely, he's going to be coming out of it on Wednesday. Um, that's just a process. And and Ed, Javon should be really proud of himself for the fact that he reported himself um, after returning to that game. That's a that's step smart. in the right direction for an NFL player. Um, and, and But Robert Hunt is really the biggest of the concerns. He's got that hamstring injury. We didn't see Robert in in the in the um, locker room today. Uh, Robert is a durable player. He's played, I believe, every game he's every game he's been eligible for. And you, you'll double check, yes. I'll, I'll, no, no, I'll just want to confirm. It's I'm not I, double checking. I'm going to confirm. Okay. You shall. You do that. What we do here. Uh, um, and I think it's knowing Mike McDaniel. I think you'll be playing without Robert Hunt. And I think Robert Hunt will probably get the next two weeks to rest and heal. Um, so that means you need to start preparing for possibly Robert Jones or Liam Eikenberg, because I think Connor Williams could be returning to the lineup this week. You might need to be preparing yourself to play a new right guard and, you know, break in. Lester Cotton wasn't that bad against uh, against the Patriots. No, uh, and Robert Holm indeed. Robert Holm. Robert Hunt indeed had played every single game in his career since arriving as a second round pick in 2020. You doubt me. You right. doubt me. I just I want to confirm. That's all. Uh, um, I was going to ask this question of Mike McDaniel during the press conference today, and but you didn't speak up loud enough. And when I do, I get comments of like, "Man, you're loud when you ask a question." So I can't. I can't win over there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I got shot it over by other people. And my question would have been because Robert Jones and Lester Cotton were sw swapping at left guard in the first three series of the game. And then Robert Hunt went, Robert Hunt went down at right guard. And I was going to ask McDaniel whether that was going to be the plan for the entire game. And that changed and, the, and his hand was forced once Robert Hunt was injured. Chances are McDaniel would not have answered the question anyway, but I was going to ask, um, but it just kind of suggests, you know, the whole, that whole saying about you have two quarterbacks, you have none. Is, was it a question of yesterday? You have two left guards, you have none. I think you're trying out and you're testing and you're seeing who performs, how, the, what the expectations are. And I think it's a fair and reasonable thing to do to rotate guys until you determine. And let in a game. For them. In a game. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because there's, I'm sorry, there's physicality involved in offensive line play. And do you get to see that physicality in practice? No. So there's also cohesion, cohesion and chemistry yeah. that's involved in, in communication that's involved, particularly with the twists and turns. This isn't this isn't a small time switch here. Looks like the Isaiah Wynn is done for the season, more than likely. So it looks like they got to figure this out for the final, you know, final stretch of 10 to 12 games. Well, I think being being having a two game audition isn't isn't asking for too much. If this was we're talking about who can finishes out the season as a starting left guard, I mean, obviously it's not a factor right now because 
you know, you, you, you might be forced to play without Robert Jones, but these are just parts. This is just stuff that good teams, which are focused on January and February, have to go through. And I think not coming to a finalized and firm conclusion until you see a sample size in two games is reasonable. I think it's fair. Do you not? No, my, I don't have an issue with that. My point is, is there, is there not a better way to get to that conclusion evaluation other than rotating every series? Absolutely not. I, I can't come up with one because the, the way that they have to launch at aiming points, um, the blitzes that come at them, you don't get to see that against the scout team. You you don't you, the twists and stunts. No, but okay. How about quarter by quarter? How or how about how about you give Robert Jones a game? You give you give Lester Cotton, Cotton a game, then you make your assessment there. As a, I'm not I'm not a fan. The sample size is not the same. You are what? The sample size would not be the same. Okay, you give Rob you, you give Lester Cotton the first quarter. Okay, by the second quarter, maybe the defensive lineman he's going up against is is, is gassed if, with Robert Jones. So that's not really a fair sample size quarter. I, I mean, down by down. I mean, people, I, I hate this theory that, oh, guys can't rotate in and out of game. Does Tyreek Hill, the number one weapon in the NFL. Are we going to gonna, are we gonna do that again? We're going to do it again. We're going to oh, do it again. Then, then why, oh, why is it that no team in the NFL uses a rotation system on the offensive line unless, unless there are special circumstances? Continuity, I get that. And I understand continuity, communication, comfort. Um, if, but both of them are new. Both of them have you. Who is better? Tell me who's better right now. Tell me who's better, Lester Cotton or Robert Jones? I would have said Robert Jones before yesterday, but he had a game where he had he had two penalties, which wasn't great. Um, okay, so you're an answer know, again. To me, give Lester Cotton a game. Give Robert Jones a game. No, oh, but then you're not going against the same player. How could you evaluate it and say, oh, Omar, come on, man. You don't, you don't think the coaches can't look at, at the film and, and no. examine the guy's technique regardless of who they're what playing. What is wrong with play? What is wrong with series for series versus the same player? I'm looking at that series. I'm looking at the intent of the play. It's in the same quarter. So the, the, the players, it's got the same level of energy and, and exertion and, and force. Like, I, how, we don't, do you know who's better? You have no clue. I have no clue. I'm not I a promise you, Bruce Barry has no clue. Omar, we're not allowed to watch practice beyond the stretching and and, and individual but drills. So how how would we know? This is why they have practiced the entire the entire okay. week. And can you practice the way that you're going to have to play against the Kansas City Chiefs? You cannot. You cannot, but you certainly can get a good idea. If you don't, you don't think that the coaches would know who's better right now. And, okay, and again, if it came down to practice. Cameron Wake would never play for the Miami Dolphins. So some guys are just I not. Don't think, I don't think your theory is crazy at okay. all. All right. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I, I mean. But but you want them to go game or game or quarter. I'm like. I, if I you see. have zero conviction as to who's better. They clearly I, have I, zero conviction. I prefer going quarter by quarter or game by game or half by half than going series by series, which to oh. me is a lot more disruptive on the continuity of an offensive line. Okay, you're, you're right. That whole that whole left side is about to be scrapped anyway. Why not experiment right now? That whole left side is is about to be replenished and refabricated. And well, the tackle and, and tackle and center left guard, they're, they're still going to have the same issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're trying to figure out who fits the best. And remember what Mike McDaniel said: Hell, Teron is probably going to decide. Like Teron is going to decide. Teron and Connor, they they have ownership stake in that offensive line. They're probably going to decide who plays bet between them. So, you know, let these guys audition it out. And and obviously Robert Jones is probably needed right now at right guard. But, yeah, we'll figure it out at some point. My, and this is what I've always found impressive about Mike McDaniel, and I continue to talk about this on the podcast. He's not thinking about right now. He's not thinking about Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs. That's please, not don't, what please don't say February. Please don't say February. Please don't say February. Go ahead. <laughs> His focus is on peaking at the right time and the future of the season. Absolutely. So to me, the rotation of the left guard, even though it probably won't be a rotation this week, eh, it's okay. Like, why not? Why? Even if it's series for series. And I, I think series for series is a lot better than half, half and half or quarter and quarter. Nah, 
you don't even have the equal amount of drives if you go half and half or quarter and oh, quarter. Oh yeah, I, no, I, under, I understand that, but the the, the amount is going to be close enough. Okay, well, uh, let's not keep beating a dead horse. You know, I love talking all line. Come on, now. I know, but I know, but it's it's boring everybody. Well, not only that, well, we, we can talk that hill if you like. We uh, not that hill. Uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> said, we can talk two if you like. I did say ten hill. Who's about to lose? Probably, he's probably going to be back as the uh, as the MVP uh, betting favorite this week because Mahomes had a, had a very poor game. Uh, I think I saw from one outlet, not the one that I usually get. From one outlet, it was it was him, Mahomes second. I want to say no Hurts, no who? Lamar. Hurts was in there. Lamar was in there. There were six. Josh Allen was in there. Uh, I don't know. If Burrow might have been in there. And to me, it's still completely insulting. That not only Tyreek Hill, I would also throw it because I didn't I didn't know this. If you don't think Tyreek Hill deserves Tyree to be took himself out of consideration, sir. MVP, you are. He said he took himself out of consideration. He is too as hype man. Okay, sorry. Would you, would you okay. please? Well, okay, well, he is team. too as Flavor Flav. Okay. okay. Flavor Flav. Uh, I can't believe I actually used to watch that show, but whatever. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, it was yeah, it was it was a guilty you pleasure. Watch flavor of love, flavor this of love, guilty pleasure for the wife. Yeah, you take your brain, you put it to the side, and then you just watch like this. <laughs> and, and and we actually enjoyed it. Uh, we, we're we're kind of weird like that. Um, I can't believe you watch flavor of love. It, it, hold on a second, I'll tell you another secret. We actually liked it. Uh, okay. Um, no, AJ Brown. I didn't know it was like AJ Brown's only like 200 yards behind Tyreek's crazy, stupid pace. He's actually his pace also would be Calvin J Johnson's NFL record for receiving yards, and he's on a streak of what is it, six games with 125 pace yards? 2002. Uh, I don't know if he's at 2000, but he's like I got some flickering lights there. I don't know if he's at 2000, but I know I, I read that he's on the pace to beat Calvin Johnson's number as well. Um, and he's been completely outrageous. And you see some of the catches. He had one touchdown catch yesterday. So those guys have been crazy. Also understanding, I also understand that those guys have no shot because because it's basically quarterback and, not, and nothing else. But um, So you wanted to talk about Tua. And there we go. We talked about Tua. Uh, so no, my whole point about the offensive line is I respect your position. I don't necessarily agree, agree with it. I hope you respect mine even though you don't agree with it. So, um, that's, that's what we're all about on this podcast. Anybody else? McDaniel mentioned as far as injuries, I'm trying to think. No, Xavier Howard didn't come up. I think all of us kind of expect him to play. Eh. Yes, no, maybe. I mean, he practiced all last week on a yeah. limited basis, which I, if you didn't have the intent of playing him, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just let it rest? So that was very interesting. But then again, Connor Williams practiced all last week, and then he suited up as a backup, um, a breaking case of emergency. Hopefully he can progress to the point where – He's healthy enough to play. You'll certainly need him against Chris Jones because that is not a game we could ride the Eichenberg Express, even though Eichenberg has been improving significantly over the past couple of weeks. There aren't glaring Eichenberg issues, if I may put it properly or diplomatically. He was fine. Um, fine. No, He's fine. I've had, no, I've had no issue with him. He's been fine. Yeah. And and again, it's not like the offense isn't producing for the most part. So now, will he go in and enter that guard mix? It's a good question. Now, how's this? Oh, I'm going to throw this one at you. How's this? Since you don't have a clear cut answer, Connor Williams comes back. So you we rotate by series at the two guard spots: Cotton, Robert Jones, and Liam. Let him fight it out. How's that for a scenario for you, or is that is that too I, much? I, I, I'm not opposed to it. I could be. I could be down with that. Um, from this, I, listen. You know, Mike McDaniel's is all about a month that I won't mention and peaking at the right time. And for, you don't know what you got to guard. You have no idea if you want to throw in Chase uh, Hines, Chase Chosen Hines, Chase Hines. 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 No, you, you get a little Freudian slip there with Robbie Chosen. Jason Hines. If you want to throw him in the mix too, I'm all good with that. I, I mean, right now they are testing it. They're experimenting. And let me let me say something to you that I don't think I, I would have ever said going into the season. Okay? Buckle down. Buckle, buck, buckle up. Okay, Drop in. Go ahead. I trust Butch Barry. 
Sure. He'll figure it out. Sure. I, listen, this is the first, second non-incompetent offensive line coach I've ever covered. I, hey, I trust him. Wow. So Steve Marshall, Googe would all fall into that category? Nope. Come no, on, no. man. Remember, we'd fall in the other category, the bad category. Yes, exactly. So the only two you would vouch for are Butch Berry and Chris Furster. That is correct. Tell me the ne- tell me the other times you've had a um maybe Tony Soprano's offensive line coach, who I can't remember who he is right uh, now. That wasn't Gooch. Mm, uh, uh, uh yeah, but that wasn't that was Gooch, I believe. Gooch, I think Gooch got fired by Tony Soprano. Yeah, I, but he was there for, for a few years and he came back the one yeah, year. Yeah. Um Jim Turner? No. No, that hell no. Come on now. <laughs> I'm playing. I am playing. I am playing. But no, I yeah, he's done everything to to earn the trust. And again, this but it's it's a whole machine offensively. It's not just uh because some of it some of it is to his ability to quickly find somebody open, get rid of the ball. Some of it is some quick throws like those wide receiver screens. Some of it's the shovel passes. And there are also some plays where Tua drops back and he's got really, really good protection to scan the field. So it's a combination of all of those, all of those factor. But I mean, anybody would complain because I know I'm, I was like with you based on everything we had heard when the Dolphins hired Butch Barry. I think, I think the collective media question was why? Why? Mm -hmm. And listen, there's nobody on the coaching staff, and I include Mike McDaniel, who's done a better job, because Butch Barry took over the worst unit. And as I say to you and, and stand by it, even though we've got some injuries, they are one of the best performing units, not not individual players, because I would say that Tyreek is performing well, but what other receiver is performing well? They They are a unit that's performing at a very high level. Barrios has been very good. Um, He's all right. He's all right. Waddle's coming off a big game win, and Waddle's been kind of nicked most of the season. This is up and down. Hey. And, and Cedric Wilson, I'll give you a prize. Cedric Wilson's had a good year. He's done. He's done. He's been a nice contributor. He's been. He's been a nice contributor when called upon. Let's calm down on good year. He's been well, a but again, but when called upon, when you're dealing with an offense that it is very, very. Very yeah. Tyreek and, Wa- and Jalen Waddle centric. I, I find it interesting that their third tar- top target has 20 receptions. Um, and then most are right behind them. So, yes, there aren't a lot of balls that go around to a lot of other players. And I'm, f- I'm, I'm fine with that. When you got number one offense, you can't really complain. You can't really nitpick it. So, no, correct. It, it's, it, this is Tyreek Hill's show. And Everybody else is a supporting character, and don't you hold that against me. I'm talking weaponry. Oh, I'm, I, I, just, just, I'm not going to hold it against you. I mean, you you, you stated the fact that just like I'm sh- just like I stated the fact that Tua is the front runner, is the betting favorite for NFL MVP. I'm, okay, I mean, those right. are facts. Those are facts. That's right. Okay. Said, said said I'm not an MVP candidate. I'm too well, no, no, that's. That, he can say whatever the hell he wants. He's not the one voting. But anyway. Um, he says he's the hype man. The, the, the hype man and the energy man. And the flame. <laughs> yeah, no, that was fun, actually. Um, I, I revealed one of our guilty pleasures. Um, <laughs> oh, good. Next, no. you're going to tell me you watch the Kardashians. <laughs> no, no, I draw the line. That, that's where you <laughs> That's People absolutely where you draw the line. Famous, famous for being famous. No, yeah, no. Hey, man, they're billionaires. They, oh, they no, no, no. I had more props to them. I am one of those who would tell you that, musically speaking, Madonna was like whatever. As a marketing gene, as a marketing person, hats off. I mean, you, Bravo. Killed the game. Yeah, absolutely. Can she sing? She's okay. Whatever. I mean. <laughs> The All music right. is okay. I mean, they're like, eh, but but she marketed herself as a yeah, as a sex symbol, sex pod, whatever you want to call it, and more power to her. Mm-hmm. Except All now right. when she's seventy three years old, trying to make out with Drake or whoever on stage, that's a little much. But, hey, whatever you know, if it works, whatever her, folks you vote. Hey, what? she's got to give Cougars life, man. She's got to give Cougars inspiration. 
Yeah, listen, I'm sorry, what? No, um, <laughs> no, I hear you. Okay, when we start talking about stuff like that, I think it's time for us to wrap up, right? Um, we have a very, very good behind enemy lines scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, gonna drop it about noon. Good friend Joshua Briscoe, radio host in Kansas City, post game radio host, as well as the publisher of Arrowhead Report, which is part of the Fan Network, Fan Nation Network of which all dolphins is, is a member as well. Uh, Omar, I'm going to tell you this and I'm going to make a deal on the air here on the air. I do not expect the dolphins to make moves of significance trades tomorrow, which is a deadline. If anything at all, if they do anything of significance, we will do a second show tomorrow. That sound fair. Okay. That sounds fair. Uh, I, I, I would like to see them be buyers in something, some way, somehow, figure out a way to improve your team by trading away a player or a, a late round draft pick because I think the Buffalo Bills will make moves. I think the Philadelphia Eagles have already made moves. I think the Kansas City Chiefs are, are going to potentially make a move. Teams that do not feel that they're complete, Cincinnati Bengals might make a move. Baltimore Ravens might make a move. This is this is becoming like an arms race. Uh, well, strap up, Miami Dolphins. Chris yeah, uh, one one quick thing you mentioned that I just want to point out that the Bills are signing Leonard Fournette to their practice squad, and also for those who are clamoring for an offensive lineman, Jets coach Robert Saleh, in the aftermath of the Jets losing two offensive linemen in their butt ugly win against the Giants on Sunday, was asked about the idea of of trading for an offensive lineman, and Saleh basically said, nobody's trading an offensive lineman. So that should take care of that notion. <laughs> a sigh of exasperation from Omar. If the Dolphins make a move, I I have a hard time seeing it being. I, I, I think you, it's, we should be kicking the tires on Lyle Collins. We flirted with him a number of times. We need to know where he is from a medical standpoint. Bring him in for a workout while the Dolphins are away in Germany and, and see where he is health wise and with that knee, because you know you're going to need reinforcements. You're on your ninth offensive lineman right now. Like, l l let's 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 kick the tires here. All righty, Poupard. We shall see you tomorrow. We are on most audio platforms. Soon we will be on Apple Play. I heard Tuesday. Um, we appreciate you subscribing. We are now referred to as All Dolphins Podcast. So hopefully you can find us on all audio streams, and you know where to find us on YouTube. Like, subscribe, do your thing, share with a friend. See you tomorrow. Visit alldolphins.com for the latest news, analysis, and columns, and it's all free. You can find Omar Kelly and Alan Poupard on the All Dolphins podcast discussing South Florida's NFL team on YouTube and anywhere you find your audio podcasts. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share so you stay in the know.